Everything wrong with four-stroke boat engines comes down to one uncomfortable truth. You're paying premium prices for compromised engineering. Manufacturers convinced millions of boaters that four-strokes are the future, quieter, more efficient than two-strokes. But here's what dealers won't tell you. These engines are costing owners thousands in hidden maintenance, catastrophic failures, and reliability issues that shouldn't exist in plus $15,000 outboards. The marketing promises and real-world performance tell completely different stories. After talking to mechanics and reading internal service bulletins, it's clear the marine industry has been selling an expensive illusion. So let's tear into the manufacturing shortcuts that start these problems. Let's start with something most people never consider, how these engines are actually built. Four-stroke outboards aren't crafted in precision workshops. They're mass-produced on assembly lines moving fast enough to keep costs competitive, and that speed creates problems. The manufacturing tolerances are frankly shocking compared to automotive engines. These units cram a complex valve train, timing system, oil pump, and cooling into a package competing dimensionally with two strokes. That packaging forces compromises in machining accuracy. Cylinder head bolt holes off by enough to create uneven clamping force lead to head gasket failures at 300 hours. Hardware quality varies wildly between manufacturers and production runs. Boats that should be grade 8 are sometimes grade 5. Gaskets use materials deteriorating in salt water within two years, instead of marine-grade compounds lasting a decade. Aluminium castings have porosity issues hidden until corrosion eats through. Here's what dealers won't mention. Many four-strokes use identical blocks across vastly different horsepower ratings. A 150 and 200 might be identical, except for ECU programming and fuel injection calibration. The smaller engine has safety margin, but the higher horsepower version runs closer to material limits. Paint and corrosion protection fails quickly. Powder coating and anodizing looks great in showrooms, but fails within the first saltwater season. Three-year-old engines show paint peeling off valve covers, corroded wiring harnesses, and aluminium pitted so badly they look 20 years old. But manufacturing shortcuts are only half the problem. Wait until you see the engineering complexity that makes these engines walking time bombs. Now let's talk about what really sets four strokes apart. And not in a good way. These engines are breathtakingly complex compared to two strokes, and every additional component is another failure point waiting to ruin your weekend. Start with the valve train. 16 or 24 valves depending on the engine, each with springs, retainers, and keepers, rocker arms or direct acting cams, valve guides, valve seats, all operating in hostile environments of heat, vibration, and contamination. Valve clearances need periodic adjustment, something two-stroke owners never think about. Miss that maintenance and you're looking at burnt valves or catastrophic engine failure. The timing system deserves its own discussion. Chains stretch over time, causing timing to retard. Belts are rubber components in hot, humid, salt spray environments. When a timing belt fails on your car, you call a tow truck. When it fails 15 miles offshore, you're calling the Coast Guard. Cooling systems get ridiculous. Raw water pump, passages smaller than a pencil eraser, oil cooling circuits, and intercoolers on supercharged models. Three different cooling circuits failing independently or in combination. Electrical systems include ECUs controlling fuel injection, ignition timing, varial valve timing, throttle position, oil pressure monitoring, overheat protection, and more. Hundreds of wiring connections exposed to moisture, vibration, and corrosion. Diagnosing electrical problems requires specialized equipment and hours isolating failed grounds. Superchargers add nightmare complexity. Drive belts under constant load, bearings at insane RPMs, intercoolers corroding through. Supercharger failures cost four to eight thousand dollars. Fuel injection systems put injectors in combustion chambers exposed to extreme temperatures. Carbon clogs injectors. Ethanol attacks seals. High-pressure fuel pumps fail with alarming regularity, leaving you dead in the water. All this complexity translates into maintenance costs that'll shock you. We're talking thousands of dollars in routine service alone. Here's where four-stroke ownership goes from annoying to genuinely expensive. The maintenance schedule reads like a full-time job, and costs add up faster than you can say shoulda bought a two-stroke. Let's start with basic service. Oil changes every hundred hours or annually. 
3 to 6 quarts of marine grade oil at $12 a quart, plus a $25 filter. That's $100 DIY, $200 at a shop. Twice yearly, you're spending more on oil changes than you would on two stroke oil for the entire season. Valve adjustments need checking every 300 hours. That's a four hour job for a competent mechanic, meaning $600 in labor, plus whatever shims or adjustments needed. Miss this service and you're rolling dice on valve damage costing thousands. Spark plugs on four strokes are buried deep in the powerhead, often requiring removal of covers, hoses, and wiring just to reach them. What should be 30 minutes takes two hours. At shop rates, you're paying $250 for plug changes that cost 50 on a two stroke. Water pump impeller replacement requires removing the lower unit, a two hour job minimum. Dealers charge four to six hundred dollars for impeller replacement. On a two stroke, it's often 15 minutes through a side plate. Same $40 part, 10 times the labor cost. Timing belt replacement is the real killer. Yamaha recommends replacement at 1,000 hours or every five years, whichever comes first. The job requires removing the power head, disassembling the front of the engine, and careful timing alignment. Dealers charge anywhere from $1,500 to $3,000 for this service, depending on the model. Miss it on an interference engine like the F-115, 150, or F-250, and you're risking catastrophic valve-to-piston contact that destroys the engine. Parts availability adds insult to injury. Need a water pump housing for a 1988 Mercury two-stroke? You can find one. Need a specific ECU for a 2010 Yamaha four-stroke? Good luck. Manufacturers discontinue electronics after 10 years, leaving owners hunting junkyards or paying absurd prices for used parts. Here's what dealers really don't want you calculating. Total cost of ownership over 10 years. Between higher purchase price, increased maintenance costs, and more frequent component replacement, a four-stroke easily costs five to ten thousand dollars more than an equivalent two-stroke. Long-term reliability is another concern. Two-strokes from the 80s and 90s are still running strong with minimal maintenance. Four-strokes from the early 2000s are already in junkyards, killed by failed ECUs, timing chain issues, or corrosion in cooling systems. The complexity that makes them efficient also makes them disposable. Even worse than the maintenance costs is discovering the fuel economy and performance promises are mostly lies. Here's the real data. The marketing materials for four-stroke outboards promise fuel economy, clean operation, and reliability. The reality is considerably different, especially for how most people actually use their boats. Let's start with fuel economy. Four-strokes do burn less fuel than older carburetted two-strokes at cruise speeds. The difference can be 20 to 30 percent better with conventional two-strokes. But here's the part manufacturers conveniently forget to mention. Modern direct injection two-strokes like Mercury Optimax and Evin Tech match or even beat four-stroke fuel economy at most operating ranges. They're particularly efficient at wide open throttle and trolling speeds. In real-world mixed use with variable loads, on and off plane operation and time at idle, the fuel economy advantage of four-strokes versus modern DI two-strokes shrinks to almost nothing, often less than 10% difference over a full season. The emission story is misleading. Four strokes produce fewer hydrocarbons than two strokes, which sounds great for the environment, but they produce more nitrogen oxides and particulates. The oil that doesn't burn in a two stroke creates visible smoke. The oil that breaks down in a four stroke creates invisible emissions, arguably worse for air quality. Noise levels are genuinely better on four strokes, at idle and low speeds. Get them upon plane and the difference disappears into wind and water noise. You're paying thousands extra for quieter operation you'll barely notice when actually using the boat. Power delivery is where four strokes really disappoint. A two stroke makes maximum torque at higher RPMs, giving you explosive acceleration and instant response. Four strokes make torque lower in the rev range, which feels strong initially but lacks the top end punch. Marketing calls this smooth, refined power. Users call it sluggish and boring. Reliability claims are the most egregious marketing deception. Manufacturers tout longer service intervals and reduced maintenance, which is technically true compared to the manufacturer's recommended two-stroke schedule. But that schedule was intentionally aggressive. In practice, two-strokes running on modern oil and properly tuned need minimal maintenance. Here's a usage scenario that destroys four-strokes. 
seasonal storage. In cold climates, the four-stroke sits with oil contaminated by fuel and moisture. Internal components corrode. Valve springs lose tension. Timing belts deteriorate from disuse. Two strokes don't care. Drain the carbs, fog the cylinders, and they'll fire up six months later. Saltwater use accelerates every four-stroke weakness. Cooling systems corrode faster, electronics fail sooner, paint and coatings deteriorate rapidly. Performance boaters learn these lessons the hard way. Racing applications absolutely destroy four strokes because they're not designed for sustained high RPM operation. The valve springs can't handle it, the oil systems can't keep up, the cooling systems overheat. Two strokes thrive in racing applications, four strokes fail spectacularly. So, who should actually buy these problematic engines? The answer might surprise you, and it's definitely not most boaters. Let's be honest about who these engines actually serve well, and who should run away screaming. Four strokes make sense for a specific type of boater. If you're buying a new boat, live somewhere with strict emissions regulations, do lots of low-speed cruising and trolling, and have access to good dealer service, a four-stroke might work for you. If you value quiet operation above all else and don't mind paying premium prices for maintenance, go ahead. If you're elderly or physically unable to maintain your own equipment and can afford dealer service, four strokes offer certain conveniences. Pontoon boat owners often do well with four strokes. Low speeds, minimal acceleration demands, lots of idle time. These are conditions where four strokes shine. You're not stressing the engine, fuel economy matters more than power, and quiet operation enhances the experience. Bass fishermen who troll for hours appreciate the refinement. Sailing enthusiasts who use an outboard as auxiliary power benefit from the fuel efficiency. Cruising boaters who put on hundreds of hours at consistent RPMs can justify the complexity with actual fuel savings. But here's who should absolutely stick with two strokes or seriously reconsider four strokes. Anyone who maintains their own equipment needs to think hard. Four strokes require specialized tools, diagnostic equipment, and knowledge most home mechanics don't have. You can rebuild a two stroke carburetor with basic tools and a YouTube video. Diagnosing a four stroke fuel injection issue requires a scan tool, technical service bulletins, and electrical schematics. Performance boaters should avoid four strokes entirely. If you're running wide open throttle regularly, doing offshore fishing, or pulling competitive skiers, the complexity works against you. Saltwater uses face accelerated corrosion and component failure. Every complex system on a four stroke deteriorates faster in saltwater. Lower units corrode, cooling systems clog with salt deposits, electronics fail from moisture intrusion. Two strokes are simpler and more tolerant of abuse. Owners in remote areas or developing countries can't rely on four strokes. When parts aren't available and dealers are hundreds of miles away, complexity becomes a liability. Budget-conscious buyers should do the math. The lower fuel consumption doesn't offset the higher purchase price, increased maintenance costs, and shorter service life. A 10-year-old four-stroke is often worthless because of pending timing belt service or ECU obsolescence. Anyone buying used needs to be especially careful. A used four-stroke is a ticking time bomb unless you know its complete service history. Has the timing belt been replaced? Have the valves been adjusted? Is the ECU original or replaced? Without documentation, you're gambling with thousands of dollars. But if you think regular four-strokes are bad, wait until you hear about Mercury racing engines, where everything goes catastrophically wrong. We need to talk specifically about Mercury racing engines, because they represent everything wrong with four strokes amplified to absurd levels. Mercury Racing builds engines for people who want maximum performance, regardless of cost. Their supercharged four-strokes make insane horsepower. The 450R puts down numbers that would make muscle car owners jealous. But that performance comes at a price extending far beyond the sticker shock. These engines run at extreme tolerances and pressures. The supercharger forces air into cylinders at boost levels that stress every component. Pistons endure temperatures and pressures, leaving minimal safety margin. The valve train operates at limits where springs and retainers constantly edge toward failure. Maintenance intervals on racing engines are measured in hours, not hundreds of hours. Oil changes every 25 to 50 hours, depending on use. Spark plug replacement every 50 to 100 hours. Supercharger service annually, regardless of hours. 
valve adjustment checks every 100 hours minimum. The consequences of missing these services include catastrophic engine failure at wide open throttle, exactly when failure is most dangerous and expensive. The parts costs are staggering. A supercharger rebuild runs $4,000, pistons are $300 each, times 6 or 8 cylinders. ECU replacement can exceed $5,000 because racing ECUs have custom programming. Annual maintenance easily tops $5,000. Here's the dirty secret. Two-stroke racing engines are still superior for performance applications. They're lighter for equivalent power, simpler to maintain, and cheaper to rebuild. A blown two-stroke racing powerhead costs $3,000 to replace. A blown four-stroke racing powerhead costs $15,000. Professional fishermen who run these engines budget $10,000 annually just for maintenance and repairs. Tournament basses carry spare engines because failures are that common. Here's the bottom line on why these fundamental problems will never be fixed, and what you need to know before buying. So let's wrap this up by acknowledging what we've covered. Four-stroke outboards suffer from fundamental design compromises that no amount of engineering refinement can fully overcome. The complexity is inherent to the design. Valves and timing systems and oil circulation create failure points that two-strokes simply don't have. Every additional component increases maintenance requirements and reduces overall reliability. There's no way to make a four-stroke as simple and bulletproof as a two-stroke because the basic operating principles demand complexity. The manufacturing quality issues stem from market pressures to keep prices competitive. Manufacturers could build four-strokes with tighter tolerances and better materials, but buyers wouldn't pay the premium. So we get engines built to a price point rather than a quality standard. The marketing promises will keep diverging from real-world performance as long as buyers make purchase decisions based on showroom demonstrations rather than long-term ownership costs. Manufacturers have no incentive to highlight weaknesses when competitors are making the same exaggerated claims. For certain users in specific applications, four-strokes deliver genuine benefits that justify their costs and complexity. But for the majority of boaters, especially those who maintain their own equipment, use their boats hard or operate in challenging environments, four-strokes represent an expensive compromise based more on regulatory pressure and marketing hype than actual superiority. The two-stroke outboard isn't dead, despite what manufacturers want you to believe. Modern two-strokes with direct injection offer most of the benefits of four-strokes without the crippling complexity. If you're in the market for an outboard, do the honest math. Calculate total cost of ownership over 10 years. Factor in your actual usage patterns. Consider your mechanical abilities and access to dealer service, and then make an informed decision. Don't let marketing convince you that newer automatically means better, or that complexity equals quality. If this video opened your eyes to the four-stroke reality, make sure you check out my video where we rank all the industry's brands from worst to best. See if you agree with the order. And hey, hit that subscribe button because we're just getting started exposing what the marine industry doesn't want you to know. I'll see you in the next one.